This is Lindsay and I'm Paige. I am Paige's mom and Paige has pulmonary hypertension. We live in Santa Cruz, California. She is 10 years old, but she was diagnosed when she had just turned three. We were at my parents' house in Southern California. She was running around and like any normal kid, but she had turned blue and lost consciousness and she had had a cardiac arrest the whole nine yards. One sister took over calling 911. Another one was doing the Heimlich and then CPR and just doing anything she could. I was kind of in a state of shock, not really knowing what was going on. So we were taken by ambulance to the closest hospital to my parents' house. I was told that she must have just been dehydrated. I knew that wasn't the case because we'd been in the car all day. We had been in the car for six hours and she hadn't exerted herself that much that day. We had to take another ambulance to a second hospital that night who did have a pediatric ward suitable for her case. They started doing all kinds of tests. They checked her for if it was a seizure. I mean, anything under the sun they did. And so the third day we were at the hospital, they wanted to bring in a pediatric cardiologist to talk to me. That was the last thing I wanted to hear as a mom of a barely three-year-old. The cardiologist came in and explained some things. Of course, I didn't hear any of it because I was so overwhelmed. But she did say, I think she might have this condition, pulmonary hypertension. She said, where do you live? You know, because we were in Southern California. And I said, we live in Santa Cruz. She was like, great. Stanford is up there and I will write you a referral. But whatever you do, don't Google pulmonary hypertension until you're able to talk to someone. I took that to heart because I was already freaked out enough. And so I didn't want to freak myself out more. And so about six weeks later, we got into a pediatric cardiologist up here, up in Santa Cruz, and she was wonderful. But, you know, it took six weeks to get in. It was just so hard waiting, not knowing what was going on. So we finally got in and she said, this is what I think she has. If you don't hear from Stanford by next week, let me know. And of course, I get a phone call from them and her whole team the next day. Paige and I were at Stanford the following day. And from there, everything went quickly and they've just taken such incredible care of her. They've been on top of it since day one. So after she was seen and diagnosed properly, she quickly got on a variety of medications, one of them being Remodulin, where she had a pump and she had a subcutaneous medicine flow 24 hours a day. I just remember being so overwhelmed and thinking to myself, I can't possibly do this. I'm not medically trained. I remember the nurse who came to my house to train me being very stern and saying, if you don't do this right, or if it gets dislodged, she will go back into cardiac arrest. So I felt an extreme amount of pressure on top of this new diagnosis for my child. It was an overwhelming period of time where I wanted to fall into a depression and I also was super anxious and worried about not being able to care for my child. So it was this weird dichotomy, but we figured it out. The longer she was on the pump, we found ways to keep her sight lasting longer at the beginning. Sometimes it would last only three days. By the time she got off the pump, which was just earlier this year, she was able to keep a sight for up to three months. So there was a huge learning curve. And the only thing I can say to people or parents who are being introduced to anything like this is that you've got this, you have to trust yourself. I had to experiment with the application of the medicine to figure out what worked for Paige and her skin. And the doctor supported me on that. And it was extremely hard for me, for obviously Paige, and even for her brother, because Paige, we would have to do a sight change It was traumatic. People forget about the siblings of children with medical issues. I had to really learn about this 
because I didn't know what to do or how to do it when I first got at that point. I couldn't understand what all this meant because I was just three years old. It was really hard for me. My friends have been really understanding about it, and they've never really treated me any different because of my condition. I never really told my teachers about it or aides. My mom works at the school, so she was really the only one who told all of them. But I was the one to tell all of my friends, so they were really understanding about it. We're really lucky because I work as a teacher at Paige's school. I'm there all the time. When she had her pump of something, if it started beeping or if it accidentally got turned off, all the staff knew to just come get me. So I felt comfortable with her going to school, knowing that I would be down the hall. So I feel very lucky. In fact, she was in my class for one year. We also are at a very small school. So there's only about 120 kids total. And that makes it very unique in the fact that people are aware of Paige when she was wearing her pump to be careful with her. And her first or second day of kindergarten, she got up in front of the class and told her class about her pump and to be careful and not bump into her. So when she was younger in the younger grades, she really had to advocate for herself to to protect herself. But now that she's older, it's just so nice that she's able to be in the same place as me. When she's not feeling well, she comes straight to my classroom. And it's just something that I couldn't imagine not having as a parent. And it's something that I'm so grateful for. Since we are at a small school, we never really rushed to get her a 504. She's in fifth grade this year, so we recently worked towards refining a 504 for her so that when she does move on to middle school and high school, she'll have a plan in place. I cannot assume that every school is going to be like her second family, especially when she moves on to middle and high school. So just earlier this year, Paige was able to transition off the pump, off remodulin, and we started titrating her up on Uptravi. The reason for this was because the last couple heart caths that she had just continued to show improvement. So taking into the fact that her cats were coming back, improving each time, and considering the quality of life she could have without the pump, being able to go swimming, not having to have to go through sight changes, the whole nine yards, we decided that we were going to give it a try. We were in the hospital for a few days, and um, she came home. We slowly titrated her up. The problem is she has several symptoms from her new meds. And eight, nine months later, she's still experiencing some of them. She will sometimes get migraines. She often gets stomach aches if she doesn't eat enough, which is hard as a parent to get your child to eat enough sometimes (laughs) to take her medicine. So there's different challenges with this medicine. When she had just gotten on this new medicine, she was at school. And I don't know if it was the nausea from the medicine or wearing a mask with the heat outside, but she passed out. And so, again, just me being able to be there and being able to take action and call her doctors right away was a gift that I'll be forever thankful for. Luckily, she was okay. And we did some changes and tweaks in her medicine routine. And she's been great ever since, minus the stomach aches and headaches. Life has been hard, but I've gotten through it for about seven years, and it's been changing what I can do. I wasn't able to swim or go in the water without something covering my arm, so I couldn't swim that much. So I couldn't do a lot of activities, like I couldn't run so much because that would like maybe make me pass out or anything like that. So I couldn't do any activities, at least fun activities. I could stay inside, but I've been doing junior lifeguards this summer and it was hard, but it was still easy enough for me to do it. And it was after I got off my medicine. Um, My doctors have 
been treating me really well. Without them, I don't think I would be this far in life. They're super kind and funny, and they've helped me a lot. Paige's team has been wonderful at Stanford. They answer any question, whether it's a silly question or not. They are always responsive, get back to us right away. Her dad, or if I have a question, they're always willing to help and to brainstorm with us about different ways we can go about doing things. They talk to us in a way that we understand. They're really there for their patients every single day. And I'm so thankful for all of them, Dr. Feinstein, for Michelle, all of them. They've just been so incredible in answering questions and caring for Paige. Stanford, my hospital, does a really exciting event called Race Against PH to raise up money for medicine and equipment to help people like me who have pulmonary hypertension. And we're especially excited to go this year for a couple of reasons. One, we haven't had it in a couple of years because of COVID, but we're really excited because Paige is being given the Pediatric PH Courage Award, and she's being honored for all that she has gone through, all the courage and bravery that is in her, and for pretty much how awesome she is. If I could give any advice to a kid or adult or anyone like me who comes into Stanford or anywhere, it's a part of your life. You kind of just have to go with the flow. But you also need to eat a lot, and I've had a hard time with that. And just listen to your parents. Your parents really know best. If I could give any advice to a caregiver of a child with PH, more than advice, I would just give them a hug and tell them that they're doing everything well and that they're going to be able to do this for their child and not to get too overwhelmed. I would advise them to have a friend or a community that they could talk to and turn to to ask questions. Just don't give up. Paige's dad and I are so proud of the way that she's handled all of this. And I know that there is no one else in the world that deserves this as much as Paige does. One thing that her doctor said when we heard about her receiving this award was how impressed they are that she's able to speak for herself in the doctor's appointments, that she's able to advocate for herself that she speaks up when she's having symptoms, whether it's a side effect from her medicine or tired from her pH. And Paige really deserves this award just for all the hard work that she's been through, all the bravery. And I know that she's gonna be her number one biggest advocate going forward. My name is Paige. And my name is Lindsay. And And we're we're aware aware that that we're rare. rare.